Hello, hello. There we go. Can you hear him very well? I can barely hear him. Yeah, we're probably. Ah. Yeah, but that blows blows you up too. Kevin says that blows me up too. That's. Yeah, you can set you can set that up. So is Fink, Fink was first in assist in the nation? Yeah. Another and Marinette's too. Yeah. Have a good show. All right, baby. That's what they're eating.
this out. He's got him out. This thing's not good. This is going to be a problem. This is going to be a problem. The Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, the site for tonight's NAIA Division II National Championship. Spring Arbor and Oregon Tech squaring off for the coveted red banner. Stephen Davis, Kevin Lehman with you. Kevin, we've got contrasting styles here tonight. We've got the pace of Oregon Tech going against the persistence of Spring Arbor. Oregon Tech wants fast pace, up tempo. Spring Arbor highly efficient. They've shot at 61% from the field in this tournament. We are underway. Spring Arbor with the first possession. The Cougars out of the Crossroads League, 29 and seven on the year. A smothering defensive effort last night in the semifinals to beat Marion, 66 to 50. Oregon Tech coming from the Cascade Conference. They ran past the College of Idaho in the semis last night, 93 to 81. As Kevin said, pace for Oregon Tech, precision for Spring Arbor, but both teams have star point guards. Paul Marendette, number 11 in dark blue, handles it for the Cougars. It's going to be a great matchup in the backcourt between these two guards. Both can control a game at not only the offensive end, but with their defense. Kick out to Tom Hamilton with five on the shot clock. Underneath, he finds Jeff Beckman, who can't finish, but the Cougars get another shot, and an open three goes for Luke Barber. All he does, Kevin, is make 46% of his triples. That is his 100th of the season. Well, Stephen, that was a horse shot, kick out off a missed shot. Now a block, and back come the Cougars. Hamilton on the push. Off to Marendette, who is their top scorer. Entry pass knocked away and stolen. Fink runs the break the other way for the Hustlin' Owls. Out of Klamath Falls, Oregon, unable to finish, and a foul going against Oregon Tech is on Seth Erickson. Now Spring Arm has to be very careful about turning the ball over because this Oregon Tech team wants to get out and run. Live ball turnovers could be the difference in this game. 90 seconds in. Spring Arbor not afraid to use all 30 seconds on that shot clock when they have it. They'll work the second and third sides of the court. Marindette cut off. This is Brandon Durnell who's had a fantastic tournament. 6'6 forward bullying his way to the basket. Unable to finish and look at Spring Arbor getting back, not allowing a transition opportunity for Oregon Tech. Well, Coach Cottingham said usually he sends three to the glass. Today they're only gonna send two and get three back. Oregon Tech looks to push the pace any chance they get. Half court offense this time and a turnover as Tyler Heaves entry pass went untouched. There is the coach for Spring Arbor. You saw Ryan Cottingham for a moment and the folks from Spring Arbor, Michigan on their feet here early. They are looking for their first national championship. This is only their third trip all time to the national tournament. Well, then you've got the Hustlin Owls who have been a staple here. 17th trip to the national tournament. They have three national championships trying to get their fourth. Marindette in the lane to the rack for the finish. Paul Marindette, the junior out of Warsaw, Indiana, showing his skill set right there. Old school power guard. Get you on your hip, finish at the rim. Oregon Tech still looking for their first points. Scotty Burge contested at the rim and unable to finish. And the Spring Arbor defense really strong here in the opening minutes. Open look, Durnell. Oh yeah, he can shoot it too. 38% from downtown and Oregon Tech forced to burn an early timeout. How about this start for Spring Arbor? They don't look like the program who is foreign to the national tournament, let alone the championship game. Well, so far they've established the pace they want, Stephen. If you score the basket, it's gonna be hard for Oregon Tech to get out and run. It allows the Cougars to set their defense. You look at the Oregon Tech huddle, Justin Parnell, third year as the head coach. He played for their legendary coach, 
Danny Miles, who was there for 45 years and won over 1,000 games. Ryan Cottingham on the other side, the 2019 Crossroads Coach of the Year in his 20th season at Spring Arbor. It's his alma mater, and he's taken him to new heights this year. Well, this is a team, Spring Arbor, that was picked eighth in the Crossroads League. They finished first, got the automatic berth into this tournament, and they have been outstanding at the offensive end with efficiency. Not only shooting at 61% from the field, they're shooting at 54% from distance in this tournament. Mitchell Fink trying to break the seal for Oregon Tech and does. Fink is a star, leads the country in assists. He averages 15 points a game, but my goodness, when they need baskets, he goes and gets them. Well, 13 points a game, but in this particular tournament, he is averaging just over 23. Fink again off the window this time. His last three games, 14 and 12 assists in the semis, 34 and 11 assists in the quarters. How about 23, seven boards and seven assists in the second round? His that sounds like my career stats. <laughs> His bad game was the first round when he scored 22 with seven turnovers. Marin Dett answers though at the other end. He's had some sensational games as well, but Oregon Tech, there's the pace. Kellen Gehrig off the bench. They are a very deep team, lots of weapons who don't start. They will play 10, 11, maybe 12 players in this ball game. And I love Gehrig's game. Instant offense off the bench. He's a lefty, tough to guard. He's had some big games in this tournament, nine in last night's semifinal. Durnell left block, nice spin, can't finish against Gehrig. Fink pitches it ahead. Gehrig, the lefty, on the attack with contact, and he will shoot two as Oregon Tech able to get out and run. Spring Arbor out to the early lead as we get our first break. You're watching the NAIA Division II National Championship. and their leaders. Well, Marin Dett can control the game at both ends, offensively and defensively. All defensive team in his league, mid-range jump shot, and he's got a power game inside. Big shoulders, muscles himself to the basket. Great defender. But this guy here, Mitchell Fink, can score it from distance, and here's where he kills you. He can split the double team and get to the basket. This is a great matchup in the backcourt. It is fantastic. Kellen Gehrig at the line, knocks home the first free throw. Slow start for Oregon Tech, but boy, we, we saw it last night. They can pile up the points in a hurry. They ran past the College of Idaho, 52 in the first half. They were up 23 at the break. It's all about tempo with Oregon Tech. They're getting up about 65 shots a game to just 53 for the Cougars in this four game tournament, now their fifth game. Garrett going for a steal zone look here from Oregon Tech. Durnell's shot from the corner blocked. I think Garrett got a piece of it. On the hustling owls, hustling the other way. Talk about Fink and Marindette. They're not guarding each other to start as Fink goes step back. Three doesn't fall. But they're both just juniors as well. These are both very young teams on each side. Now Fink, a third team All-American last year. Of course, those teams have not been picked for this season. His numbers are video game numbers. Fink, eight and a half assists in this tourney, 23 points. He's number one in the nation in assists. And Player. how about Marin Dead? He's only number two. 
player of the year in the crossroads as Spring Arbor turns it over. We talk about Oregon Tech, fast-paced and offense. They're not a bad defensive team either. Justin Parnell said the biggest key for his guys this week here in Sioux Falls, they decided to get down and guard both in transition and in the half court. And this is their third year in a row here for Oregon Tech. Now they are not strangers at all to this tournament. Rich, rich history, as we mentioned, in the open. Justin Parnell, who was an All-American player at Oregon Tech less than a decade ago, told us his guys are getting a little tired of hearing about how good Oregon Tech used to be, and they're glad to be back at that level now. Look at the work on the offensive glass, and Tyson Faust, who has had an extraordinary tournament, gets the putback and a chance for a three-point play. He's on a run of three straight double-digit scoring games entering this championship. Well, we talked about this deep bench. Kellen Gary came in and gave him a lift, and now you got Tyson Foss, just a freshman. Long arms can get to the window. I like his game. Foul was against Jeff Beckman, the center and leading rebounder for Spring Arbor. They, he's also their emotional leader. They need him on the floor as Garrett gets whistled for that hand check. We talk about Oregon Tech's depth. They want to run. They'll play a lot of bodies. Spring Arbor will play eight or nine guys, but it's really six that see the majority of the minutes and do all the scoring. Steven, they have four guys that are shooting over 34% from three-point line. They are difficult to guard. They will be patient offensively, move the ball, take open looks, and they're led by right there, their point guard, Marin Dett. Some of the bench is in right now for Spring Arbor. Three reserves on the floor. This is Denver Cade playing off to Marin Dett. Now inside with it, and getting knocked to the floor is Peyton DeWilt, who is their scoring threat off the bench. He averages seven per game and plays 17 minutes. But boy, the bodies just keep coming for Oregon Tech, and Justin Parnell told us, doesn't matter who's out there. I don't even sub. He goes, my assistants do all the substitutions. We just run the same things. He goes, the only guy I ever take out is Mitchell Fink. When we change point guards, that's me. Everything else is my assistants. Well, I asked him about that because I didn't believe that any head coach would get control of the substitution patterns. But he certainly does that. But he says they can play late in the clock, too. Their, their motto for Oregon Tech is quick in transition, late in the clock. So there's that area in between where they're going to milk you back and forth if they don't score in transition. Fink from the elbow. Yes. Well, that is a pure jump shot. Well, unless you're Mitchell Fink, then you've got the green light to shoot at any time during the shot clock. The Cascade Conference Player of the Year with six points. Oregon Tech has their first lead. An answer, though, at the other end from Jeff Beckman, a guy who probably needs to have a big game tonight for the Cougars. But wow, right back the other way. Faust with the finish. How quick was that? Off a made basket, Stephen. They get out quick. You cannot turn your head running down court. You have to sprint, show the numbers, get that transition stop. Beckman, baseline. Nothing there, gives it up. DeWilt cut off in the lane, kick out deflected, but saved by the Cougars. Six to shoot, wide open look, Tom Hamilton. Fink gets the deflected rebound and a long outlet for Faust. Back to Fink. Or does Fink control the ball game or what? Yeah, good defensive transition that time by the Cougars. Good cut from Denver Cade, but the entry pass deflected. Spring Arbor keeps it. Another sub for the Hustlin' Owls. They will just keep running bodies into this You game. don't hardly get a stoppage where a new Hustlin' Owl doesn't come in. Or two or we three may or see, four. We may see a hockey line change. Five for five for Oregon Tech. We're here and we're all for it. Marindette cut off. Good defense from Faust. Marindette gets it back. Needs to attack. Five to shoot. Gets to the rack and finishes. That is pure power, Steven. He gets you on his hip and keeps you on his hip. Big shoulders. Can finish, and now we've got the matchup we're looking for. Marin Dett on Fink. Fink off a defensive switch going against Cade. Lost it, but able to get it to a teammate. Now pull up in the lane, goes for Seth Erickson. 
his first points. He scored 27 last night in the semis. He's having a fantastic tournament. Came in averaging 13 a game, has had 17 in this tournament per game. The silent assassin, Seth Erickson, he kills you softly. Denver Cade. Points from an unexpected source for Spring Arbor. Only Cade's sixth three of the year. He averages about one point per game. No, oh, they need that. They need some bench points, the Cougars do. Steal by Cade. Well, Marindette attacking against Fink. And we thought these teams might have a little nervous energy to start this game, but they've settled in very nicely at both ends. Hamilton kicks it out in for Marindette, and Fink called for a foul. First on the Oregon Tech star point guard as they posted Marindette against him. Spring Arbor up one as we get a break. Beautiful Sioux Falls, South Dakota on a lovely evening. Division II NAIA National Championship game here inside the Sanford Pentagon tonight. Stephen Davis, Kevin Lehman with you. Tight ball game through the first nine plus minutes. What do you see as the keys tonight for both these teams? Well, if you're Spring Arbor, obviously it has to start with defensive transition. You've got to get bodies back, show your numbers, and slow down the Owls attack. And at the other end, offensive patience. We talked about the precision. They are shooting it so well in this tournament. Oregon Tech, tempo. They want this thing fast. And on defense, Stephen, they have to really communicate because this is a highly efficient Cougar team. They Mar can score you in a lot of ways. Marin dead in close. Couldn't get that one to go. Oregon Tech making a defensive adjustment. Tyler Heeb guarding Marin Dett that time. They're throwing some different bodies at him. I don't think they want to put Mitchell Fink on him because you can't get thinking foul problems. And Marindette with that physical body, he can get you in the paint, get his shoulder on you, create contact and create fouls. Spring Arbor seven of 16 shooting so far, three of five from three. Oregon Tech seven of 14, 0 of two from downtown. Hard attack to the basket from Harrison Steiger, couldn't get it to go. Back the other way come the Cougars. Spring Arbor is the three-point threat in this ballgame. Oregon Tech wants to get it to the basket. The Cougars, though, the ones who will go inside to Durnell, but they like to kick it out for the threes then. Durnell, though, this time all the way for his first basket inside. He has five points. Well, he is too strong for Seth Erickson. They got the mismatch they wanted inside. No second defender. You've got to send someone at. And that's a tough decision because they shoot the ball so well from three. Garrett Albright, good post presence for Oregon Tech, but can't finish on the jump hook. And hey, Spring Arbor gets to walk it up the floor again and try to add to a three-point lead. Great ball movement and player movement. And there's the ISO. They used it last time. Durnell this time goes baseline for the finish. Second team all crossroads. The sophomore out of Fort Wayne has really come on here late in the season. Oh, he had 81 points in this four-game tournament. He is too strong for Seth Erickson. Third Oregon Tech turnover. Boy, Brandon Durnell is a difference maker on the block. Well, then also coming back in the game is Albright. They're going to put Albright 
on Dernell. Albright at six foot nine will offer a little more resistance. Spring Arbor has gone small here. Beckman is out, so Dernell the only player taller than six foot four on the floor for the Cougars. Cougars the are not blue a real big team. They prefer to use ball movement and that three-point shot. Hamilton leaning in. Fink got a piece of it, but also got some arm. And that is two on the star point guard for Oregon Tech. Mitchell Fink, and now Justin Parnell has a decision to make. Fink's the only player who hasn't sat yet for the Hustlin' Owls. Still lots of time to go before halftime. Now Coach Parnell, he's discussing with his assistants what move to make. You have to take Mitchell Fink out of the game. Now we'll see how much this affects their ability to push the basketball with their All-American candidate, Fink, on the bench. And the other question is, how long do you leave him on the bench? You're down seven with 8.50 left. Biggest margin of the game either way as Tom Hamilton knocked in both free throws, one of the two seniors who starts for this Spring Arbor team. Oregon Tech going inside. Erickson, nothing there, has to kick it out. Scotty Burge back in from downtown, too strong. They'll get another shot at it. They are an excellent rebounding team, fourth in the country in offensive rebounding, fourth in rebound margin as well. They attack you from almost every position on the offensive glass. Erickson up top for Gehrig. 17-footer is short. Marindet the rebound. Well, that Spring Arbor defense is a wall right now. Well, they had to do two possessions in a row because of giving up the offensive rebound. That last trip down, Paul Marindet. When Oregon Tech called the play, he called it out to his teammates. They knew exactly what they were going to defend. They were in tune with the scouting report today at their shoot around. The players were on it before the coaches could say stuff. That's a great point, Steve. And, and this is a team they haven't played before. Very focused group. Good spin by Burge. It won't go home, though. And Spring Arbor comes away with it. Boy, Oregon Tech getting to the basket a couple times. Haven't been able to finish lately, though. What they've taken away is their transition baskets. Now with Fink on the bench, it's going to be harder for Oregon Tech to get that up tempo office that they, that they like. Marindet at the foul line. Yes, sir. Well, I saw him play last night, Stephen. Instantly fell in love with her, Paul Marindet's game. Seth Erickson fouled on the drive. That's the same thing as Coach Ryan Cunningham said. He said, I saw Paul Marindet in high school. I said, we got to have this guy. He is the difference maker. He okay. is so far tonight. Spring Arbor up nine. Inside the Sanford Pentagon, the NAIA Division II National Championship, Spring Arbor leading Oregon Tech 25 to 16. First half, Mitchell Fink, Kevin, back in for the Hustlin' Owls, but they gotta find a way to slow down Spring Arbor right now. Spring Arbor is shooting 50% from the field, 10 of 20. They have been outstanding throughout this tournament in their ability to fill up the net. Well, what a decision there by Justin Parnell to bring his star point guard back in. Fink with two fouls, but 
He is the heart and soul of this Oregon Tech team. And when they nearly turn it over, even with him in the game. Fink behind the back. What two defenders keying on him, but able to set up a teammate. And Cal Stevie cashes a triple. First three of the ball game for Oregon Tech. And only the seventh triple for Stevie coming into this game. That was a big lift for Oregon Tech. Spring Arbor, though, works that clock, works their offense. Hamilton, a 10-foot pull-up, bangs off the window, and back come the Hustle Owls. Fink with the pitch ahead. Again, excellent defensive transition. Four blue jerseys back. Oh, and Garrig getting to that dominant left hand. He has six here in the opening half. Garrig and Faust off the bench are instant offense, and they're not jump shooters. They get to the rack. Garrig can split defenders. We talk about this fast-paced pay. He is perfect for it. He's a 6'3 junior from Bieber, California. Durnell working Iso inside. Again. Going to the baseline to bank at home. Now Durnell's only 6'6", but he's got big shoulders, great footwork in the post. Gets his man on an island, and he's going to finish him. Cal Stevie, a little confidence. Three point a game scorer, he's got their last five. Depth paying off. Back inside to Durnell, he kicks it out. DeWilt cashes the triple. There's the challenge that Oregon Tech has. Sent a second defender at Durnell. It was Fink, gave up the three. How about another one? A little heat check for Cal Stevie. He Oregon. scored two, zero, four, and two in this tournament, previous four games. He's got eight well, tonight. As Bill Self likes to say, anybody can be great for a day. It's Cal Stevie's day. Foul from behind on Matt Van Tassel. That's two on one of the reserve post players for Oregon Tech. They spread you out. Attack the basket, draw contact, and get to the free throw line. We asked, you asked Justin Parnell last night about well, how do you play 10, 11, 12 guys? He goes, I'd rather play seven or eight. But my coaching staff and I sat around at the beginning of the year and said, we've got a lot of players. How are we going to do this? And we decided, let's play everybody. You know what else they did, Stephen? They really got in the weight room this year and mm -hmm. he said, we don't run. We sprint to the offensive end. But Spring Arbor's been outstanding in getting back and getting their defense set. They also got in the weight room, felt they had to get stronger. I mentioned it's still a fairly young Hustlin' Owl team, just one senior, that's Quim Valve. He has not played yet tonight. Rest of this group's gonna be back next year, and they have four players redshirting back at home. Well, this is their third year in a row to the national tournament. There's a true heat check. As Stevie comes up short, Albright, great effort to try to save it, but it's Spring Arbor ball. Hey, when you got it going like Stevie, you got to keep testing the waters. Although now that led to a substitution, Stevie's going to take a seat, but oh, what a great lift he gave the Hustlin' Owls. Seth Erickson back in. He has just two tonight. Erickson. 14 point a game scorer and an all conference player out in the cascade. Marin dead up top. Guarded by Faust this time. Albright with the rejection. It'll stay with the Cougars. Well, that's an ISO play. That's run completely for Marin Dett. Gets the ball at the elbow, live dribble. Excellent defensive play by Albright on the rotation. Only thing better he could have done, Stephen, was block that and kept it in bounce. 10 on the shot clock. DeWilt's driving shot doesn't go. Denver Cade on the kick out. His second three. He had made five all season entering tonight. He's got a pair and it's an eight point Cougar lead again. Well get a three ball off an offensive rebound. Scramble defense. Step in three ball. Nobody contested. That's new age basketball. Offensive rebound. You don't take it back up. You kick it out to the three point line. 
Gehrig, though, with an answer. With a bench for Oregon Tech, keeping them alive. They've scored 20 of their 28 the reserves have. Memo to the Cougar defense. Kellen Gehrig is left-handed. <laughs> Oh, the Spring Arbor team always so composed. Marindette plays it inside. Beckman, short on the jump hook, gets his own rebound. Barber, not the guy you want to leave open. Another triple for Barber. That's the third triple that's come on. An offensive rebound and a kick out. Six threes for Spring Arbor in the first half. Jumper goes, a deep two for Seth Erickson. Oregon Tech hanging in there. Well, Spring Arbor, though, riding this wave of momentum. Well, they've got the tempo they lock. Even though we're up 37-30, this is the speed that Spring Arbor wants to play. Half-court game, side-to-side -side ball movement. Look at the great people movement. you got blue jerseys. Spacing is outstanding. Six of nine from three this time. Beckman drives it off the shot fake. Nine-point game again. Now, their spacing and ball movement Takes away the help defense. Faust losing the handle. Cougars to the floor. They've got it. They'll take a timeout. We will take it with them. Spring Arbor and the folks from Michigan. Loud and proud. Six threes in the first half. Nine-point lead late in the first half for Spring Arbor, 39-30. Kevin, Spring Arbor is a very good three-point shooting team, sixth best in the country, 41% for the year. They've taken it up a notch, though, tonight. Well, they've shot in this tournament 54%. But look at their numbers here. You got Luke Barber shooting at 46%. High number. He's made 93 in the season coming into this tournament. Tommy Hamilton can knock him in at 46%. Paul Marandot doesn't shoot a lot. But he makes it at 37%. And then you got Durnell, who's hurt him inside, can also knock down threes. He's at 34%. That's a tough cover. And guys, you didn't mention Peyton DeWilt has hit one tonight. And Denver Cade, who had made five all year, five out of 16, has hit a pair. Well, one of the issues we kept talking about, does Spring Arbor have the depth to hang with this Oregon Tech team? Because remember, this is the fifth game, and eight days for both these teams. And the Hustle and Owls have, they can go 10 deep. We weren't so sure that Spring Arbor has, can do that. They certainly have proved it here in the first half. Well, for Spring Arbor, if there is a fatigue factor, you needed to get out to an early lead and they have done just that. They've got a big lift from those players off the bench. Two minutes to go, first half. Spring Arbor looking for a double-digit lead. The nine-point advantage matching their biggest of the night. Beautiful back cut, but good defense from Oregon Tech as DeWilt couldn't get a shot. Now he swings it corner to Durnell. And the seventh three of the first half goes for the Cougars. Seven of ten from downtown. Ball movement outstanding. Oregon Tech, their defensive communication has to step up. Gehrig off his own miss. He scored 10, keeping Oregon Tech in this one. He's a one-man wrecking crew. He scored transition, those sweeping drives, 
and now off the offensive glass. Hustlin' Owls want a couple stops here to end this first half. Marin Dett ports it. One Hamilton. minute for the Be Owls. Beautiful shot fake. In and out though on the jumper and Lockie McKim with the rebound. Fink needing help gives to Erickson. Fink working against Marin Dett. Nowhere to go, out to Erickson. Back to Fink, eight to shoot. He launches, yes! Mitchell Fink. The dagger, ice in his veins. Now, Fink has to play this remaining 25 seconds without a foul. Four second difference, about four and a half seconds, game clock and shot clock. Marin dead on top of the situation. Now they get into their offense. This has been a clean game. Only three fouls on the Cougars. And for the Owls, that's number six. So they had a foul to give in that situation, Stephen, but they can't do it again or else it's going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. Both sides able to make changes after that kicked ball. Shot clock gets turned off, so now SAU can hold for the final shot. Aaron Dett pressured. Four seconds. Marin Dett on the run. My goodness! Paul Marin Dett beats the buzzer with some acrobatics and sends Spring Arbor to the locker room with a nine point lead. He only beats the buzzer, but he scores on three white jerseys. Spring Arbor up nine. Ryan Cottingham's their 20th year head coach. He's with our sideline man, JJ Hardigan. All right, guys, we're here with Ryan Cottingham here at halftime. And coach, your team got out to a, a strong start there, an 8-0 run to start the day. Your three defense around the perimeter, though, has been terrific in this tournament, holding them without a three in the first 13 minutes. What's been the big key for you guys here so far tonight? Well, we're playing with great energy. The, the challenge we face is transition defense because they want to push and play so fast. And so, you know, we jumped out to that lead, but then they just came right back. Look, they're a really good team. They're well coached. They're, they're deep. They've got a lot of good parts. This, this is a slugfest. We're just getting warmed up right now. What's your big message for the team in the locker room here at halftime? Stay persistent. Don't get too high, too low. Continue to guard. we got a rebound, limit them to one and we have to control pace, so 20 minutes. That pace, Turnell got off to a little bit of a slow start, but he hit his last four shots, including that big three in the corner. How big has he been for you guys down the stretch here? He's a dog, man. He's just a warrior. We love him, man, and he's, uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll ride him all night. All right, Coach, good luck in the second hey, half. Thanks so much. That's Coach Cottingham here for Spring Arbor. They've got the lead at halftime. We'll get you some stats and a look around uh, the rest of this tournament, how it's progressed here so far. When we come back in just a couple minutes, we continue with more action from the NAI D2 National Tournament on ESPN3 right after this. Halftime at the Sanford Pentagon in the NAIA Division II National Championship. Spring Arbor with the lead, 44-35 over Oregon Tech. Stephen Davis, Kevin Lehman with you. Uh, maybe the pace Oregon Tech wanted in terms of points, but yet Spring Arbor seemed to control the action most of that first half. Well, Spring Arbor with only two turnovers, and one of the things Oregon Tech wanted to do is try to get out and run, 
force some turnovers. The ball handling has been so good by the Cougars that doesn't allow Oregon Tech to get out in those running lanes. So looking at these two teams, we mentioned they play different styles. They also come from very different places. Spring Arbor, Michigan, it's not a big town. 2,881 people. Uh, they, they talk about the family atmosphere with the school and the town, but it's only their third trip ever to this national tournament. They, they're newbies here, and yet they, they're playing like they've been here every year. They're playing with a high level of confidence, well prepared by their coach Cottingham. And we talked to them last night. They talked about the community of Spring Arbor, how they're such a part of that community, not only the basketball team, but the entire community. And it's just one big family in Spring Arbor. On the other side, Oregon Tech, they've been here a lot. Out of Klamath Falls, Oregon, 17th appearance, tied for the second most all time here in NAIA D2. Three national titles under legendary coach Danny Miles, who went into the College Basketball Hall of Fame last fall. They're back to being what they expect Oregon Tech basketball to be out in the Northwest. Now, and that's what Coach Justin Parnell, he said, we want to get back to what Oregon Tech, what the Hudson Owls were all about. Three national titles. They've had all those appearances. He's played for that system for Danny Miles. His assistants have played in that. They want to get this culture back and bring home another national title. Oregon Tech with some work to do, though, trailing by nine at halftime. 44-35 is the Spring Arbor lead in the NAIA Division II National Championship. Inside the Sanford Pentagon, halftime Spring Arbor with the lead over Oregon Tech, 44 to 35. With Mark Burchard, Senior Manager of Championship Events for the NAI, I'm Stephen Davis. Mark, this has been a fantastic championship here in Sioux Falls, second year for the event up here. How has it gone from your perspective? Amazing. Uh, the folks up here, the Sioux Falls Sports Authority are great. That's rich in basketball. There's a ton of basketball going around at conference tournaments before we got here. There's one going on at the Premier Center, our national championship again. It's been great, so. And one more year for this event, and then NAIA, big news recently, will combine to one division for basketball in two seasons. Correct, in 2021, we will merge divisions uh, for a single division in men's and women's basketball. Um, it's, there's a lot of work ahead of us right now to, to make sure that that, that goes well. Um, I'm looking forward to that because I think it's a, a good step for the NAI to unify and be a single division. Obviously, the NAI started with basketball, so it's great to have that as our premier sport. And moving forward, I think it's going to be a great thing for us. Uh, from your perspective, you get used to seeing teams like Oregon Tech, Indiana Wesleyan, who won the championship last year coming to these events. How cool has it been to have a school like Spring Arbor who's relatively inexperienced in the national <laughs> tournament not only make it, but get all the way to the championship game? Watching them play has been great. They've had so much energy. Their crowd has grown almost doubled <laughs> in every round. Um, so they have a lot of obvious support here, uh, but it's, they play with a lot of energy, but so does Oregon Tech. Um, they, they went through the defending national champion last year, Indiana Wesleyan, and they've been playing some great basketball as well. 
they have. We're looking forward to a good second half. Mark, thanks so much for the time. That's Mark Burchard, Senior Manager for Championship Events from the NAIA. We're at halftime. Spring Arbor with a nine-point lead. Oregon Tech back out getting loose for the second half. They've got some work to do. Coming up in the second half, Stephen Davis, Kevin Lehman, a nine-point deficit for the Hustlin' Owls. We heard Ryan Cottingham's comments going in. Hey, we're just getting started in this. He knows Oregon Tech's going to make a run at him. Well, no question. And, and Oregon Tech, Dustin Parnell are hoping that their depth will somehow take effect in here in the second half. But here's the big difference. Seven of ten from the three-point line for Spring Arbor. They got four offensive rebounds. They kicked them out. They've got nine points from those four offensive rebounds. Instead of going back to the basket, threw them out to open three-point shooters. Well, both these teams very good offensively. That makes for great TV. We get lots of highlights out of it. Look at some of the highlights from the first half of this ball game. Got to love the starting lineups with the lights out, neon flashing the two stars, Mitchell Fink and Paul Marendette. They've lived up to the hype so far. Marendette so strong with the ball. Oh, he is the power power player and, and Fink is able to answer look at that great balance the defender falls down and there is that ball movement we've seen but not able to finish there's a convention around the hoop Stephen they are battling inside but they got to get Fink going in the second half well Spring Arbor just kept going and Ryan Cunningham used the word persistence that's kind of how they just play normally that's their offense persistent and Finally get a good look, whether it's at the rack or on a kickout or Durnell in the post. Well, they had to send the double after Durnell, and they paid for a three when they did that. Here's what or Spring Arbor does so well. They spread you out. There's that three ball off the double team as Fink decided to leave. See Fink hands up in frustration. But a little life at the other end from the bench of the Owls. Now Cal Stevie giving him eight points. Kellen Gehrig producing 10 off the bench. but. Too many three balls for Spring Arbor, and their fans haven't sat down since the opening tip. <laughs> They're excited bunch over there, hoping to bring home the first national championship, the Spring Arbor. 44-35 is the lead for the Cougars at the break. Mitchell Fink played with two fouls quite a bit in that first half, but got to the break with just two. He needs a big second half for Oregon Tech. And that second half, comes your way next. Spring Arbor with a nine-point lead. You're watching the NAIA Division II National Championship game on ESPN3.
Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Falls getting set for the second half of the NAIA Division II National Championship. Let's check in with J.J. Hardigan who talked to Oregon Tech coach Justin Parnell. All right, guys, I had a chance to talk with uh, Coach Parnell, uh, Parnell at halftime, and uh, he, he basically just kind of looked at offensive rebounding, said that they need to be better on the offensive glass, and they need to find a way to stay consistent as a team. But he said if they could get it down to five points with about four, th four or five minutes to go, it's going to be a point where Fink is just going to have to take this game over and take it into his own hands, and they're going to rely on their big score. He's been there all year for them and throughout his career, and so uh, look for that maybe down the stretch, but they're looking to just be consistent underneath and get those big rebounds to start this second and a half. All right, thank you, JJ. Justin Parnell, 2019 Cascade Conference Coach of the Year. Kevin, he's a young guy. He's really calm and loose with his team. Uh, I don't think he's going to panic, but yet uh, for Oregon Tech, they might have to do things a little differently in this second half and play some of their big guns a few more minutes. I wouldn't be surprised to see them come out with some full court pressure off made baskets or some dead ball situations. They have to do something to take Spring Arbor out of their rhythm offensively, speed this game up at the offensive end for Oregon Tech. This has been the pace that Spring Arbor wants. Even though they put up 44 points, it's been the half court efficiency. When we talk about Spring Arbor being a not a slowdown team, but a precision team in the half court, they still average 80 points a game. It's not like they don't put the ball in the basket. Yeah, that's a good point. It's just that Oregon Tech really wants to get out and go, so the fact that Spring Arbor has made them play in the half court at Oregon Tech's offensive end has been the difference in this game. You look at our two point guard matchups, uh, Paul Baron Dett, 10 points, three assists. We've talked about the foul problems from Mitchell Fink. He's got nine points, five assists, and no turnovers for Oregon Tech. Turnovers a number to keep an eye on. Oregon Tech forces 15 turnovers a game. Spring Arbor gave it up just twice in the first half while going seven of 10 from distance and only two points off those turnovers for Oregon Tech. Uh, but the efficiency of Spring Arbor, you know, Coach Parnell mentioned, hey, too many offensive rebounds. They only gave up four. Just yeah. the fact that three of them turned into three three-point shots and a total of nine points for Spring Arbor makes that number look bigger than the four offensive rebounds that they gave up. Well, Oregon Tech, the fourth best rebounding team in the country, both in terms of rebound margin and offensive rebounds. They want to dominate the glass this second half. Oregon Tech gets it to open half number two. See what Justin Parnell has dialed up for his guys. Fink on the handle. Little isolation middle and a step back from the foul line trickles off. Dernell runs it down for Spring Arbor. Well, they gave Fink a chance to get going starting half number two. They gave the middle lane open, let him do his cross, which he is usually deadly at. And now you have to sit down and guard for 25 seconds or so in the half court. And look at all these ball screens, ball movements around the perimeter, dribble handoffs. Great. Throw a lot at you. Great screening team. And patience. Dernell way out. And the Cougars stay hot. Their eighth three pointer. Dernell's third. And Steven, they go deep in the shot clock. They make the Owls guard for a long time, and then stick it, stick the knife in your back with that three. Albright, left block. They need to get him going in the post. Jump hook, not there. One and out for Oregon Tech. Marindette eases it the other way. They look for another long possession. Patience and precision. Or just put one up and let it hit the front of the rim and get the magnetic roll. Luke Barber's third three of the night. And it's a 15 point game. Oregon Tech needs answers. Fink on the move, draws a foul. Fink's trying to do this all himself, get some penetration. Actually was looking for a dump off. The defender not rotate over, had nowhere to go. And that's his great upper body strength. Be able to control the ball, even though he's trying to make a pass, nowhere to go. Oregon Tech, one of the things they did really well in last night's semifinals against the College of Idaho, draw fouls, get to the line. They have not done that at all, hardly tonight. Seth Arbor, Erickson defend, looking to get going. They defend with their hands out. But I thought we might see some pressure from Oregon Tech off, made, off a made basket.
spacing is so well done for Spring Arbor. Durnell stepping out off the pick and pop. And an offensive rebound on the tap out. Jeff Beckman, the silent assassin. He makes all the small plays to help you win games. Marindette settles for the fadeaway. Look at the pitch ahead by Fink and the find by Burge. Tyler Heave with the finish. The Cougars thought they were in good position, but two defenders ran to the right wing. They couldn't find him on the left side. On Was it Heave that finished? Yes, sir. 11-point game. Four straight for Oregon Tech. Durnell. Too easy inside, Brandon Durnell, huge ball game, 17 points. I told you yesterday if I was in a pickup game, I would take Brandon Durnell first. I'd own the court all day long. Fink drawing contact will shoot two. You also said you love Brandon Durnell's hair. <laughs> it's, it never, it's never out of place. Well, he is a tough customer. He can score on that block. He gets you on the hip, little spin, just off a kiss sophomore. off the window. Sophomore playing like a senior. Two shots for Fink. Well, Fink is a guy, and Justin Parnell said, might need him to take the game over. He's a guy very capable of taking a game over. Well, his tournament's been outstanding. 23 and a half points a game in the previous four games. One out of two at the line for the junior from Clackamas, Oregon, the Cascade Conference Player of the Year. The key for Spring Arbor is number 11. Marindette can control a game at the offensive end. Hamilton, baseline, gets under the hoop. Durnell gets another open look and hits another. A big smile, he has four threes, 20 points. He had a big smile, and Seth Erickson, Erickson had a huge frown. Fink gives it up. This is Hebe. Fade away. Too strong. And a foul on the Owls. I really like what Beckman does. He's six foot six. That may be generous, but he works the glass at both ends as good as anyone I've seen. Beckman alone has tipped three out at the offensive end that led to three point shots for the Cougars. Well, less than four minutes into the second half, but this looks a lot like the first half so far. Yeah, Coach Parnell talked about getting this thing to single digits. That's the important, if you're the Owls, you want to get this down to a workable number. Marindette called for the walk. But that is a dead ball turnover. It allows the Cougars to load their defense. Erickson up top into Faust at 6-3. He likes to post. Power game, great leaping ability, and he banks it home. Tyson I Faust. I like the play. They ran him over a screen off the elbow. It left his defender on an island on the weak side. That's right where they're going to go with it. DeWilt in off the Cougar bench. McCade hit two big threes, now hands it to Hamilton. They want to go to Durnell, and they do, against a bigger defender in Albright. Durnell using the strength. Two shots coming. Brandon Durnell, a force inside and out tonight. He and Spring Arbor leading Oregon Tech by 13 in search of their first national championship.
It's not called Sioux Falls for no reason. There's a little ice mixed in still this time of the year, but Spring Arbor with the 55-42 lead. Oregon Tech trying to make a push, Kevin, but Spring Arbor just keeps scoring. So efficient the offensive end. And this guy at the free throw line has been a big part of it. Brandon Durnell is having an outstanding tournament. He's got that old man's game. Backs you in from 10 feet. You lose track of him, he's going to knock a three ball in on you. 20 points for Durnell, 8 of 12 shooting, make it 21, 4 of 6. Well, Albright is 6 foot 9. I thought him pushed out far enough. And what does Durnell do? He just puts his shoulder down, sweeps around him, and draws the contact. Results in too easy from the free throw. 22 for Brandon Durnell. He had a 25 point game in their second round win over Jamestown. Erickson in the lane, scores. Seth Erickson, eight points. Oregon Tech still hanging around within striking distance, but they need stops. Need to get Erickson going. Erickson had 27 in that semifinal game. But you're right, you can't trade baskets, Steven. They've got to make stops. And a wide open three from the corner. This time Denver Cade cannot connect. Rare miss from distance for the Cougars tonight. Only three turnovers by Spring Arbor. That's been an issue for Oregon Tech. They can't get going downhill. Erickson gets downhill there. And the 11 Here comes point the press. Game. Little three quarter court press. Good spacing. It's not gonna be match, a match up on Grinnell. It's not going to be a quick comeback for Oregon Tech because Spring Arbor is so disciplined offensively. Five on the clock. They get it to Durnell. Fade away. He's on fire. Brandon Durnell, 24 points. They can't handle him in the mid post. Erickson stepping back. Garrett keeps it alive. Erickson able to track it down. Darnell's got a smile on, even when he's playing defense. Garrick, tough shot. A dozen for Kellen Garrick, who averages five a game. He's been huge off the bench. Well, you see him last night, that he was getting some great confidence in his game. Marindette got downhill, pulls up and hits. Steven, how about the body control by Paul Marindette? At the other end, Harrison Steiger with a high degree of difficulty. Well, quick response. They got the ball up the court quick. A Spring Arbor finding space, attacking at the back end of the press. Denver Cade with eight in this ball game. Well, great pass by Peyton DeWitt. He waited for that play to develop before he delivered the assist. Erickson, NBA range. I see a little panic in Seth Erickson's game. Well, Brandon Durnell getting a breather. Those folks from Spring Arbor, they're still on their feet. It's gone from maybe a little nervous energy to just flat out joy over there. Well, they said a few more were coming in after they advanced to the semifinal game. And now, Oregon Tech have given up on the pressure. They're back in their half court man to man. They gave up too many. They couldn't match up to Spring Arbor at the end of the pressure. Hamilton near the corner. Ball screen, Owls switch. Hamilton looks for help, gets it inside to Beckman. Against the shorter Fink, Beckman to work and an offensive foul. Two against Jeff Beckman. Well, Mitchell Fink, not accustomed to guarding in the post, but stood his ground. Well, I'm giving Fink the Academy Award for that one. <laughs> Good job of salesmanship. Fink 6'1", about 190 pounds. He went down like he got hit by one of those big round balls that smashed buildings. 
What do you call those things, Steven? Wrecking balls? Wrecking ball. <laughs> Steiger with the kick out. Derrick trying to create, just elevates. Not there. And a reach-in foul whistled against Garrick. Boy, Spring Arbor commanding this game here in the second half, up 13. Brandon Durnell, a huge reason why. 12 points in the first half, 12 more already here in the second half. A sophomore from Fort Wayne with 24, leading the Cougars. Well, you see the score, 63-50 in favor of Spring Arbor, looking for their 30th win and first national championship in school history. Kevin, the concerns for Spring Arbor were depth against the pace of Oregon Tech, playing fifth game in seven days. Would there be foul trouble? Can they hang in there against the, the fast breaking of the Owls? They've done all that and some more. They've been sensational tonight. Well, 12 points off the bench for Spring Arbor. They've got a huge lift from those bench players. But well, the story of the game is Brent. Brandon Durnell, he's just pinned his ears back and attacked the basket, then stepped out and knocked down some threes. Four of six from three-point range for Durnell, nine of 13 overall. He's still on the bench, though. See where the Cougars go this possession. Beckman at the high post, kicks out to Barber. Barber's hit two threes, but gives it to Marandette, who has a dozen. Three assists as well for Marandette. Tried to shoot that, and Fink poked it free. Mitchell Great hands Fink. by Fink. Mitchell Fink brings it the other way. And Marandette reaching in, got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. His second foul. Well, this is the matchup we're looking to see. These two old school power guards going at it. Fink won both battles at the defensive end, poked it loose, then drew the foul on Marandette. Cal Stevie had a huge first half, adds another three. 11 points tonight for Stevie, including three threes. He came in averaging under four points a game for the Owls. And a 10 second count. Well, we talked about Spring Arbor. They had momentum, they have the crowd up. If Oregon Tech could string together three or four good possessions in a row at both ends, maybe their crowd starts to get involved. They've been silent tonight. Well, fifth turnover for Spring Arbor. Both teams have handled it very well. Only Hustle. four turnovers by the Hustle and Owls. The Hustle and Owls, they have to capitalize. Big possession, four point swing if they can get it. Pick and roll, Albright doesn't finish the layup and Durnell somehow kept it in bounds. Well, Albright's gotta punch that through. Go up and dunk it. Cause now you're gonna play defense. Tough three, Barber almost went. Garrick racing ahead, attacking. Another missed layup for Oregon Tech, two in a row. And it'll stay with the Owls, but uh, Albright and Garrick may be having nightmares, especially Albright on those two layups. The Hustling Owls have had opportunities to cut in this. And remember we talked about how important it was to get this lead down to six, single digits. They've had two opportunities to do it. And now a third coming up. Faust, not a shooter, plays it off to Fink. I give it to Fink and let him create. 
And they are double teaming him off screen. Stevie, his huge night continues. They knew they had to take away Stevie's three-point shot because he's been so hot. Excellent shot fake and attack the rim. A little confusion for Oregon Tech and Marindette makes some pay finding Durnell. Great two-man game. Fink frees himself. My goodness. Mitchell Fink with 13. It's a seven-point game. This is as close as Oregon Tech has been since way back in the first half. Timeout, 9.36 to go. Spring Arbor trying to hold him off. Well, Spring Arbor has controlled the action for the most part tonight. They lead Oregon Tech 65-58. 9.36 to go in this NAIA Division II National Championship. Stephen Davis, Kevin Lehman with you. Spring Arbor's been so good tonight offensively, shooting 57% overall. 10 out of 16 from three, but Oregon Tech starting to make a little push here over the last couple minutes. Well, they got the thing down to a manageable number, seven points. The officials coming over to explain something. We oh, had yeah. a review. They were checking on the last shot by Fink to make sure it was a three ball. And it was. We knew that. We could have told them. They didn't need to go to review. Well, you were saying about Oregon Tech making a little push right now to get this back to a seven-point well, game. I feel pretty good if I'm Justin Cornell. You're down to seven points. you got 9.36 left. Lots of times. And now a little pressure. Starting to see... Will some fatigue set in? Because Oregon Tech, they've played 12 players already in this game. They've done it the entire tournament. Spring Arbor has basically played only seven tonight. Marindette gets an open look. Short on the triple. He doesn't shoot many threes. He is accurate, 42% for the year. Now Oregon Tech can get a little closer. If they can take this game over, either by passing, or scoring. Tough pass inside for Stevie. And a foul whistled against the Cougars. How about the game this young man's had? Cal Stevie. He's right there in the middle of Main Street. Seth Erickson back in, receives the inbounds. Stevie staying in, now Fink with it. Controlled attack by Fink, settles for the fadeaway. Good position defense by the Cougars. Jeff Beckman has just been outstanding at both ends on the window. With that two-man game, that time the hustling, I was able to smell it out. This is Beckman at the offensive end. Losing the ball, but going to the floor to get it back. Barber trying to beat the clock. Great blackout by Stevie. Fink pulls up. Pinball rebound controlled by the Cougars. Well, they yeah, are. You can see how the Cougars like to walk it up. Paul Marindette moving his people around. Marindette gets it back on the wing. Durnell, great cut off the cross screen. 
in the lane, scores yet again. 28 for Brandon Durnell. Now, Albright thought he was going over his left shoulder. Even I thought he was going over his left shoulder. Came back over his right. Erickson to answer, yes. Seth Erickson has warmed up. Eight in the second half, 12 for the game. I like the way that he attacked the nail, got his feet in the paint, got it to a shot that he wanted. Big possession now. Hustle and Owls need to stop. Thirteen on the shot clock. Marindette holds it high and skips it for Hamilton. Open look. Eleven made threes for the Cougars. Set play. Pinned his man on the weak side. Flared it over the top. Fink short. Faust fouled. Oregon Tech will have it, but Spring Arbor's three-point shooting has been the story. 11 triples for the Cougars. Well, this is a great set play. Spring Arbor up 10 here at the Pentagon. Left side of the bracket in this NAIA Division II championship tournament. Oregon Tech coming from that side. They've hung a bunch of points in their last two games. 107 over the defending champs, Indiana Wesleyan, and then 93 last night against the College of Idaho. This is their fourth title game. They've got three national championships, or make this their fifth national title game, trying to get to their fourth. And they're capable of big runs, Steve. And against College of Idaho, they had a 24-1 to one run to end of the first half. So they haven't had that big spurt yet today. Still to come. They will need a big spurt here in the final 6.58. Tyson Faust trying to get it started at the line. Four Owls in double figures tonight. Nobody with more than 13. Two Cougars in double figures, led by Brandon Durnell's 28 for Spring Arbor. Jeff Beckman, 10 rebounds for the Cougars as well as Faust hits both free throws. Eight point game. And it looks like they'll set up a little bit of pressure. Gotta have some pressure. I really like Faust. Freshman's got a huge upside. He was player of the year in his league coming out of high school, averaged 23 and eight rebounds. Marindette near the elbow. Two-man game with Durnell. Why not? Second Durnell defender. Marindette hesitation to the rack and one. I called him an old school power guard. This is why. Hesitation. Look at the strength at the finish. Takes the blow. Gets it on the window, kisses it through, and now a chance for the conventional three-point play. We talked to him last night. He is a great kid, extremely nice, as are all the, the players on both these teams that we got to talk to. But during the game, Marindette doesn't change facial expressions. That's a poker face. Cold-blooded. He is a nice young man. Thousand-point score. You know, and he wasn't very highly recruited coming out of high school. Warsaw, Indiana, his team male was Kyle Mangus. Basketball hotbed of Warsaw, Indiana. There's some dudes that can play in that town. We've got one on the court right now in Paul Marindette. Erickson's jumper not there. Spring Arbor with control. 
the basketball and an 11 point lead nearing six minutes to go. Well, you can't speed this team up because of Marin Dent. He's gonna control the tempo at the offensive end. Marin Dent up top against Heeb. Dernell, five to shoot, Heeb the deflection, diving for it in backcourt. And a shot clock violation, possession never changed. So the shot clock did not reset. Dernell's trying to plead his case that he was in the shooting motion as he picked it up the floor and tried a uh, underhand heave. Well, Kirby Wells wasn't buying what Dernell was selling. <laughs> Kyle Bowen, Kirby Wells, Dylan Brasher are officials tonight. Well called game tonight. Nice flow to it. Mitchell Fink and Oregon Tech bounced in the first round the last two years in this tournament. Down 11 in the championship game tonight. They'll have almost everybody back next year, but they're only concerned about this season right now as Fink had to take a tough shot that time. He's got the attention of the blue jerseys. He turns a corner, there's a defender waiting. And we talk about Darnell shooting it. He has been outstanding on the backboards here in the second half. Darnell having to run that one down, couldn't quite squeeze it. And Paul Marin dot, Marin dead. He upset with himself. He made the bad pass, and now he's he's slapping hands with his teammate Darnell, saying, "I'll get you next time." Bad angle though. He needed to take another dribble below the free throw line. Dernell would have been wide open on the block. Fink, <clears throat> drop off for Gehrig, and he got fouled underneath. Gehrig is the back cut ninja. He loves working the baseline. He knows he's gonna get it when he runs that baseline. Mike Mitchell Fink, defender, turns his head. Gets caught watching the paint dry. Foul was on Beckman, his third. Oregon Tech's turned it over only four times tonight. They're shooting 48%. But Spring Arbor's been that much better at their offensive end. Gehrig, 12 points tonight. And 11 from 19 from distance for Spring Arbor. It really spreads out this defense of Oregon Tech. Well, it's a tough cover and it keeps giving Brandon Durnell isos inside because you got to guard everyone at the three point line. Marindette content to let that clock tick and work it way out on the floor. Ball screen from Durnell over to Barber. Now Marindette posting. Durnell gets the open three look, not this time. 4.35 to go, Oregon Tech running short on time. Fink realizing it attacks quickly and scores. Put the defender on his heels, Mitchell Fink going downhill. You've got to meet him up higher, get him stopped, get him going lateral. Great move by Fink. 15 points to go with seven assists tonight and no turnovers for Fink. Marindette sets up DeWilt. And Oregon Tech on the glass. Two open threes, Cougars. Fink couldn't finish. And one from three. Well, he's the third team All-American last year. And this is why putting his teammates on his back, Fink pulls up out of the clouds. Three ball.
Arbor trying to bring home their first Division II National Championship. Wins over Indiana Tech, Jamestown, IU East, and League Full Marion to get here to the title game. They're out of the Crossroads League. They say it's the toughest one in the country. It's hard to argue with them. We saw two Crossroads teams play for the title here last year. Two were in the semis this season. Steel hardened steel. The Spring Armor team has been prepared for this going through that Crossroads League. It is a tough conference as we've seen in the past histories of this tournament. Mitchell Fink has scored the last five for Oregon Tech. He's trying to finish a four-point play. And the junior from Clackamas, Oregon, gets the Hustlin' Owls as close as they have been since the opening eight minutes or so of this game. Here comes the pressure. Faust back in. Now Faust has great lateral quickness and length. He's going to try and tip one loose. Marin dead able to get open and get the inbounds. Up ahead for the senior, Tom Hamilton. Oh, by the way, Spring Arbor won eight games Tom Hamilton's freshman year. Now as a senior, they're playing for a national championship. He believed in the dream. Paul Marindette said, we spoke this into existence. As Soon as I signed on, I said, we're going to play for a national title. He was right. He's trying to make a play, and he'll shoot two. Do this you believe in that, that guys can speak things into existence? <laughs> well, this is the final piece of the puzzle. When they signed this guy, Marin Dead, they knew they had the leader on the court and off the court to help bring this team to the championship level. But watch out for Tech now. They've got plenty of time. Down five. And the question is, Spring Arbor, how are their legs? We saw them miss two open threes right before that last media timeout. And then there's that free throw. Paul Marindette leaves it short. One of two at the line for the 78% free throw shooter. Six point game. Fink all the way. He very quietly has 21 points now. Steven, that was too easy. There was no resistance. Came off a drag screen, got all the way to the rim. No one switched. Dernell fakes the handoff, needs help. Finds Beckman, who's roaming the perimeter now. Well, Gary trying to keep the, balls out of, the ball out of Marindette's hands. Dernell creating, draws a foul. Sixth team foul of the half. Well, he's Darnell got. will shoot two. He's got 28. That's your hot hand. Put it in Brandon Darnell's hands. 73 and a half percent at the line this season. And it has been his night. Three of three at the stripe for the sophomore out of Fort Wayne. 29 that one, points. That one was a house roll, the first one. That went four feet up, swished through the net. Under three minutes to go. They got to switch any ball screens on Fink. Fink crossing over, lost it, got it back, gives it up. Garrett got hammered by Hamilton. I tell you where Fink is really impressive. He loses the handles on basketballs, like on that last drive. Has gets upper body strength, strong hands. Is he able to pick that up, kick it to the corner? And now they're at the free throw line. That, this could have been a turnover. He's done that the last two days I've watched. Big free throws here for Kellen Gehrig. This is a one and one. Now, Garrick started his career at Humboldt State as a freshman, transferred to Shasta Community College as a sophomore, now a junior. This is his first year He's with Oregon the, Tech. The only California guy on their roster, they really recruit local under Justin Parnell. They're all about the Oregon guys. That's the culture that Justin Parnell has set. Four-point game again. Heeb right up in the face of Marindette. Spring Arbor so poised offensively. 
Marindette made the catch falling down, caught up with a dribble alive. Last touch by Fink. Well, Marindette did the same thing we saw Fink do. Potential turnover, quick hands, strong arms, picks it up and keeps possession. Well, they got eight on the shot clock. Marindette. Powering in. Ball knocked loose. Oregon Tech's got it. Well, Beckman almost flipped one in over his head. Great defensive stand. Fink finds Faust, blocked, Albright, no. And a foul against Garrett Albright, who had another good look at the rim and couldn't quite finish in close. Well, you've got it. you missed the shot. You can't create the foul. You got to live to play the next possession. Only the seventh team foul, so this is just a one and one. But Spring Arbor is an excellent, excellent free throw shooting team. 77% as a unit. Well, you put Luke Barber up there. Luke Barber's at 83%. It ends up being an empty trip. And well, Oregon Tech gets it right back. That's the same as the turnover. You miss the front end of the one and one. This game has not been closer than four since the opening minutes. Fink almost got the bounce. Hamilton, the deflected rebound. They switched the ball screen that time on Fink. Gave him some resistance. And Ryan Cottingham wanting to calm his team down a bit. Takes a timeout with just 91 seconds to go. Well, Brandon Durnell has been the star tonight for Spring Arbor with the big ball game scoring, but Paul Marindette has controlled this thing, and he hasn't exactly been quiet. He has 16 points. He's done it a number of ways, upper body strength and power. I just like the way he controls his team at the offensive end, but this guy, I think, he can score points in a hurry from the three-point line on the drive. His hesitation is outstanding. His ability to finish in traffic unmatched in his tournament. Fink, 21 points, seven assists. Marindette, 16 points, five assists. They both lead their teams in scoring, and they're one and two in the country in assists. Complete package. We knew we were gonna have a great point guard matchup in this game, and that's exactly what it has developed. And a tight finish, maybe not exactly how folks saw this one coming, but Spring Arbor and Ryan Cottingham trying to hang on. Orange Tech looking for one more stop. Marindette guarded by Tyler Heeb. Put some size, Heeb six foot five. They switch the screen, Durnell now against Heeb. Double. Double team. Barber sidesteps. Three. Long rebound. Durnell has it. Spring Arbor can run more clock. Beckman fouled. Good foul by Seth Erickson. He was not going to give up an easy layup. We have not called Beckman's name out much as far as scoring baskets, but he makes these types of plays time and time again. Right place at the right time, draws the contact. What do you think, Spring Arbor just wants to run time? How about Marindette saying, hey, big fella, take it on the baseline, you're open. 82% free throw shooter, Jeff Beckman. Just his fifth point tonight, but an honorable mention, all crossroads performer with 10 rebounds. Now he's a quiet guy, but they call him the motor. The real leader of this team. And we see Paul Marindette with a ball in his hands. But Jeff Beckman, he's a winner. He does all the little things to help you win games. Fink gets it to go. They just spread the court and let Fink go one-on-one -on, -one on Marindette. All right, back to a four-point game. 
What's the strategy for both sides right now? If you're Spring Arbor, you know you're going to get pressure. If you're Oregon Tech, do you bring a foul quickly? Well, that's a great question. I think with 54 seconds left, you're going to get pressure. You're going to try and get that quick steal. Then you go back and play defense. you got to make a stop. I wouldn't put this team on the free throw line this early, Stephen. They're too good a free throw shooting team. But we know we're gonna, the ball's gonna go in the hands of Paul Marendette. You see the team foul situation. Nine on Spring Arbor, eight against Oregon Tech. So foul is only a one on one at this point. Spring Arbor still two timeouts. Oregon Tech has one. Possession uh, arrow is with the Cougars. I'm looking down the line here. Marendette, 79% free throw shooter. Hamilton, 76. Grinnell. Also I'll say from the line. They handle the pressure. No foul yet from Oregon Tech. They're going to play it out. Marindette surveys. Look for a two-man game. Marindette shovels it off to Beckman, and he'll shoot two. There's my guy. Beckman making all the little plays at the end of this game. This is set up, though, by the great penetration of Marindette. Now, a lot of point guards would leave their feet in that situation. He made the play with his feet on the floor. His balance and ball handling strength is outstanding. Beckman, an excellent free throw shooter, gets the roll. Offense for defense for Oregon Tech. Now you've got to get Fink to change directions. You can't let him get at the rim on a straight line drive and take away all three balls if you're Spring Arbor. Six point game, timeout Ryan Cunningham and Spring Arbor to set up the defense. Good move. Because you got to talk about Mitchell Fink and how you're going to handle ball screens in the past, they've just spread the court and let him go one-on-one -on -one down that middle lane. But you can't foul him because you don't want Oregon Tech to get free throws with the clock stop. Is this a must-score possession now for Oregon Tech down six? And if so, do they need to go for a three with only 27 seconds left? I wouldn't go through three. I get to the rim quick because you know that Oregon, uh, Spring Arbor does not want to foul and then set your press up. Well, you know Fink will have it in his hands. Justin Parnell, an All-American player at Oregon Tech, less than a decade ago, drawing up the play in the huddle. Now, if I'm Ryan Cottingham, I might even take my inbound defender and deny Mitchell Fink the ball. Make someone else bring it up. But I don't think they'll do that. They pride themselves in that half-court defense. Switch all ball screens on the perimeter. All exchanges contest the three-point shot. Threes won't beat you right. Uh, threes will beat you right now. Twos won't. Spring Arbor will pick up a bit in the full court, but look at Oregon Tech making sure they can get it into Fink. Here he comes. Against Marindette. Leaning in. Tough shot goes what touch for Fink 25 points tonight fourth game of five in the tournament with 20 or more I like this to get to your best player let him get the basket Marin dead hands to the lights he wasn't going to draw a foul give up the two get your free throw shooters back in the game final timeout called by Oregon Tech now they have to foul. You have to foul if you get a steal out of the first trap. You try to deflect inbounds pass, and I would trap the first catch. I wouldn't foul until it came out of there. Well, for Oregon Tech, it's been a, a long week. Uh, they were 48 hours of travel to get here to Sioux Falls from Klamath Falls. Uh, all sorts of travel nightmares. Spring Arbor's had a very enjoyable time. Uh, this is new territory for them, and they've handled it extremely well they really have a team that doesn't have the experience Oregon Tech 
This is their third trip in three years to this tournament. Spring Arbor, they haven't been here. How long ago was it, Steve? 2010. I knew you'd know that answer. That and 1997, their only previous appearances in this great event. Well, they are 17.6 seconds away from bringing home a championship. Durnell trapped, gives it up. Precious seconds ticking away. Hamilton feeds it front court to Barber. Now Durnell lays it in. The great finishing spacing. touch. Ball movement. Not there for Fink. Faust and Spring Arbor is the 2019 NAIA Division II National Champions. Ecstasy and agony in one shot. Congratulations to the Spring Arbor Cougars, national champions, behind 11 three-pointers tonight and a 32-point performance from Brandon Durnell. Total team effort by this Spring Arbor team. Big plays from Jeff Beckman late. Paul Marin dead controlled this game from start to finish. Brandon Durnell with an outstanding game. Spring Arbor picked eighth preseason in the crossroads. We'll take the red banner home. Unbelievable journey for this team. And you know, talking to Ryan Cunningham, you just he had the feeling that this was a special group. They had their priorities straight. They were a family atmosphere, great culture, very unselfish team, and they certainly showed that in today's performance. Town of about 2,800. Look at Paul Merendette, overcome by emotion. Well, Ryan Cottingham has been the head coach at his alma mater for 20 years. He's got a national championship on his resume now. He's with J.J. Hardigan. Let's do it. Coach, 20 years with this program. It, it's your first champ championship here with Spring Harbor. What does this mean for you guys, your family, this program? It, it, it's, <laughs> it's hard to put into words. Just love these guys. Yeah, they're, they're champions to begin with, and now they've won a championship, right? We, this is just icing on, on the cake for just all their hard work and their perseverance, and I uh, just love them, man. You know, and it all starts, we just talk about our family. It all starts with at the core. Our, our, our faith and belief in Jesus Christ is first, and, and we go from there. And uh, we're, we're a family. I'm just, I'm at a loss for words, which isn't very often for me. But to God be the glory, to God be the glory. Your team had to battle and persevere here even at the end, but getting down within four points here, Oregon Tech battled back. That's a terrific program on the other side as well. They are phenomenal. Well coached, they kept coming. Unbelievable game. I feel like the two best teams met in the championship game. Could have gone either way. We're, we're humbled, we're blessed, we're grateful. Uh, SAU Cougar Nation, let's go. Coach, congratulations on the win. Thanks so much, man. Thank you. Well, Ryan Cunningham, obviously, uh, Overcome by emotion at your, your alma mater, 20 years. You win a national title seemingly out of nowhere a little bit. Uh, being picked eighth preseason. They had a great regular season, but I don't think anybody other than their family saw them running the table here in Sioux Falls and walking out. What a performance tonight by, by their team. Uh, he, he talked yesterday that it's about their culture. They recruit to that culture. They want a specific kind of kid. And they delivered on that tonight. Those guys were mentally and physically ready for the challenge. You know, they knew Paul Marendet when they signed him that he was the missing piece of the puzzle and the leader that they needed in the, that backcourt. And this team shot it extremely well through this whole tournament. Again, 53% from the field. Amazing 12 for 22 from three. And let me say, first of all, congratulations to Oregon Tech. Justin Parnell, that's another great team. We're going to hear from him again. They only have one senior on that team. 
Well, Spring Arbor is your national champions. NAIA Division II for 2019, 30 and seven on the year, first in school history. For J.J. Hardigan, Kevin Lehman, our Sanford Pentagon crew led by Chad Hunt, this is Stephen Davis, Spring Arbor, for the final score of 82 to 76, will take the national championship trophy and red banner home to Spring Arbor, Michigan. Thanks for watching the NAIA Division II National Championship from Sioux Falls, South Dakota.